All right, thank you everyone for coming tonight. Um, I think this is might be our third go-round of having an all-boards meeting. Uh, a little bit different time of year, a little bit different purpose. So, uh, I don't know if all of our town boards are represented here, but it looks like we have a pretty good complement. Uh, so the idea behind tonight's meeting, our primary focus is going to be on the updated master plan. Um, and just uh, the select board wanted to um, work with the planning board and give the planning board an opportunity to share with everyone at least the highlights of the plan. Um, we always say things like, oh, it's available on the town website, feel free to go read it. Um, but that isn't always the same as having the planning board, who did all of the hard work and heavy lifting, um, be able to put their take on it. Um, so just a couple of points of clarification. Um, we do not intend the update to the master plan to in any way be dictating or driving the budget process. I know some folks have asked about that, but certainly um, if we do want to do any sort of long-range planning, it makes an awful lot of sense that our decision-making support the master plan. So uh, in the absence of knowing what it contains, then it's rather difficult to do that. So um, at any rate, uh, just uh, Big shout out to the planning board members. Um, this is a lot of work that went into it. They're, um, they did it in concert with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. And the original, or the last master plan was 10 years old, Jim, or? Yes, 12. 12. So it was done about 12 years ago, and we had intended on updating it uh, in 10 years' time. So there, again, there's been a fair amount of work done. Uh, many of you in the room were interviewed as part of the process, but. Um, at this point, I just want to, we have just a few agenda items tonight, but let's kick it off with the planning board and there will be an opportunity for folks to ask questions after the presentation. Is that you? All right, Jim Maximowski. Good evening and welcome to the overview of the updated master plan. I have no intention of reviewing the master plan in any kind of detail tonight, just to kind of give you a history of where we are, how we got here, and really open it up to questions. I'm sure there's some out there. Um, I don't need to bore you with the details of master plan because it's available, like Molly said, all over the place. Anyway, so, the first master plan was issued in October 2005. Once a master plan has been created, it must be updated at a minimum of every 10 years or so um, for Master and the Laws, Chapter 41, Section 81D, thereby making the master plan a sort of evergreen document. This update was issued in March of 2017, and we started doing this uh, planning of the update of the master plan in 2015. The update was accomplished by gathering info and comments from from public survey for anyone who wished to participate was on the town's website and were hard copies distributed all over town to various businesses if anybody wanted to take it partake of it interviewing <laughs> different key players in town public forum there was a stakeholder meeting of important businesses and farmers and stuff like that of a larger farm to get their input on those kind of things and then there were different focus groups that were done the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission is the one, the group or the company, if you would, that was in charge of updating the master plan. That's who the contract was with. To no surprise, the 2015, the latest update, 2015, has very similar important topics as the 2005 master plan. Some of these items are preserve our natural and rural area, preserve agriculture, the quality of public services, quality of public schools, and the environment. The master plan is not just a zoning document for master and the laws. It has nine specific sections, goals and strategies for the town, land use, housing, economic development, natural and cultural resources, open space and recreation, services and facilities, circulation, meaning transportation systems within the town, and, implement, and the last one is the implementation program. 
From these sections, it is obvious that a master plan encompasses most, if not all, the town boards and departments. The implementation program in section 11 of both plans is the one that depicts the recommended strategies. Primarily recommended strategies, primary, primary board responsibility for that particular item, other responsibilities for the particular items, priorities, high, medium, low, and a target year. The listing of the implementation strategies is ex rather exhausting to say the least. There's probably 10 pages or so of items, and they encompass all the, many of the boards in town. Some of, most of the, well, I'll list all of them. Planning board, selectmen, fire department, police department, DPW, conservation commission, historical commission, building inspector, park and recreation, finance committee, Capital Planning, CPA, Agricultural Commission, Zoning Board of Appeals, the Schools, and the Housing Authority. In case you're not at least quickly briefed through the updated master plan, I probably just made you aware of some responsibilities that you may not have been aware of here on a particular board. And for those of you that have breathed through it, there are probably actions and questions and concerns about that particular board or some of the responsibilities of those items. So, without further ado, let's open up to many questions and see what you have for questions, comments, and we'll try to answer them with between myself and Bill. Any questions? Yes, sir. Yeah, how does the planning board plan on implementing what's in the long range plan? The planning board does not have sole responsibility for implementing the plan. Like I said, this is the responsibility of other boards. We're not an overseer. The planning board cannot direct any other board to do anything, especially if you're elected. Everybody stands on their own. We can't direct selectmen. Selectmen actually cannot direct the planning board because we're all selected. I mean, we give each other guidance, questions, answers, and we're not going to beat you over the head and say, hey, you need to do this. Like I said, the list is huge. Will everything get done in the next 10 years? I guarantee you no. Not everything got done in the past 10 years. That's why there's a lot of carryover. Some of these are continuing. They'll never get completed. It's a matter of working on the items, and it's up to each individual board or committee to try to work on what they can. And if you look at the master plan, there's a lot of things that are being worked on already. It's not a brand new idea, it's just some lot of it is common sense, we need to do this, we need to keep on top of this, um, stuff like that. So, you know, we're not going to be an overseer and say, hey, you're not following up, you're missing your due date or your target date. That's not going to happen. No, none of us have, we have the time to oversee each other, even. Yeah, Jim's absolutely correct. Uh, the benefit to this is this is the second uh, time we've addressed this. And when you start to go through it, you're going to see what all the planning boards work. A lot of the things that are strictly and very important to the town of Hadley that was there in the first uh, wave is now being addressed on many different levels. We have a tremendous amount of uh, uh, energy savings opportunities to the taxpayers. Now that's a very important part of it. We have uh, solar uh, panels uh, in a lot of different areas in the town of Hadley. Again, that was brought forward on the first one. It's now being implemented. Uh, we talked a lot in the, in the article about new and volunteers that we need for all different boards and how we can get that done. And I think we're starting to see different people getting involved with our town government. Um, as, as he had also said, that preserving farmland and saving vistas, all that's just been followed through. You're going to see a lot of repetitiveness. And I was on the first committee with a lot of the people that are in this room here. Um, and a, a tremendous amount of work has been done based on, on what were the, it was in the original one. Um, so I, I think you're going to see, um, if you have a chance to read through it, that a lot of the work's being done or is in the pipeline for getting work done on it. I'm sorry, Jim. It's okay. Just a couple of items that, like I said, are almost continuing forever. Under housing, there's an item, discuss maintaining 10% of the housing stock as affordable. That's something we have to keep on top of. Right now, we're in good shape. And yes, if we do nothing in 60 years from now, 
we will be in trouble at our present building. Our, if we average the same amount of building, new houses as we've done for the last few years, it'll take us 60 years to mess that up. However, to wait 60 years, I don't want to be here 60 years from now telling you we're blew this up, we've got to do something about it. The idea is slowly con and continuously see where we are, stay on top of it, and don't let us fall behind the eight ball. So that's something, you know, just one item, it's a simple one that I just looked at quickly, and it's an easier one to address right now because we're in good shape. But there's others that we just need to be on top of, be it the planning board or whatever board it may be. Molly had something. Uh, Molly has a question. Okay. So I'm just sitting here and I was listening to what you were saying. I probably actually should be asking this right now, but I, I think it's, it's kind of evolving. Um, in looking at that section 11 that you're talking about, the implementation plan, and just as, as Jim stated, I mean, there are a variety of people with areas of responsibility on here. Uh, when we did the last one, we had an actual implementation committee, correct? Um, we no longer have an implementation committee. So to the point that the planning board can't really dictate what people should be working on, um, the select board can, I suppose to a point, exercise some level of leadership here, but there are many other groups that are elected or really not under the purview of the select board. Um, somebody needs to be driving the bus. And so what ideas, have you guys thought about that or should we talk more about it? The implementation committee that was appointed by the selectmen but for the previous master plan was technically illegal. Um, they should have been appointed by the planning board. The, the, when I come to find out on the mass general laws, the selectmen cannot appoint a planning implementation committee. Is that right, Bill? Well, it's the implementation is the responsibility of the planning board. Right. But the committee that was appointed primarily looked at just zoning bylaws. They were not driving anything except a few zoning items, zoning items. They did a good job, don't get me wrong, and that kind of stuff. But the master plan is far more encompassing than just some zoning items. The vast majority of items on there really cannot be addressed by zoning. Um, there's a few that can. Agreed, we look at those, we're working on them, it'll take some time, and like I said, it'll, it'll, we work on it for years. That's one of the things we work on with the Friday Valley Planning Commission. But there's a lot of other items in there that, uh, you know, somebody needs to drive the bus, I agree, but this bus is massive, and the planning board doesn't have time, nor should it be telling other boards and staying on top of them, what are you doing? The board should be taking the initiative to look and pick, oh, we can do this one, we can do this one, and over the next period of time, try to do something with it, as opposed to the planning board acting as, if you would, overseer. I don't think that's the planning board's job. It's the planning board's job to overall look at the plan and to update it, but to drive the bus on this, the bus is probably too large for the planning board to drive. So with, with that said, that I guess, um, so it seems like somebody at least should be collecting an update. You know, so for example, one of the items on there is the support of public safety. So, so right now in the budget process, we're trying to address some shortfalls in the um, fire personnel staff, and I think people are fairly well, of that, well aware of that, and we've done that with police as well. So that's a piece that, you know, in the finance committee and select board are working very hard on during the budget cycle. Um, would it make sense to have some sort of a master plan implementation quarterly meeting where people are invited to provide updates on what they're doing? We could do it jointly or do we want to come to a planning board? I'm just trying to figure out how to make this yep. keep rolling. Yep. A quarterly, quarterly meeting is probably way too frequent. Um, given all the things that are going on, the, on, the, on all the different boards and everything else, I mean probably once every six months or once every year, or an update on one of these um, all board meetings, or an email would also work, but maybe a, a once a year. I doubt we're gonna have to get more accomplished than once a year to have an update on this. And maybe we can update many parts, of, minute parts of the master plan as it becomes appropriate. It's 
So I'm going to suggest that um, every board and department received a hard copy of the master plan. Um, and as has been said, it's available on the website. I would suggest that everybody, if they have not already, take a look at it, highlight the sections that relate to your department, and um, that be happy. I think the planning board could serve as sort of a clearinghouse that if, if you would designate someone in your various departments and boards to follow up on the tasks that have been assigned to your departments and boards, if you give a name to the planning board, that would be helpful, I think. But initially, um, we need you to take a look at this. Uh, everybody had some input on it. Uh, but if you have better ideas or you have questions, we need to hear them. So please take a look at it, flag what affects you, and uh, we'll just stay in communication on it. Has either, excuse me, has either the planning board or Pioneer Valley prioritized any of this so that it can be in some way focused in the different departments? I, I know that, so there's a long list of everything, and as Jim had said, this is a monumental task. Is there any kind of priority list that we can work off of in the individual departments to try to help get this started? Not by individual departments. Each of the sections has a high, medium, and low in it um, for the different items. To try to prioritize by department, I think, um, might run into some conflicts with the different topics. I think because you've got, well, you've got nine different sections, and or actually eight of those actually have different, different sections. The ninth, the ninth one is actually the implementation. But of the eight sections that are, you know, housing, economic, natural, and cultural resources, um, I think the board, individual boards are going to have to look at what they have responsibility for. Most, except for the planning board and selectmen, usually the individual boards have something within, very limited within the different sections. They're not across all the different sections like the planning board and selectmen are. So um, those are already prioritized by high, medium, and low. And what high, medium, low means is obviously very subjective. So, in that case, I guess there is some kind of a priority for some of the different departments that they could look at. Other questions? Can I stand to that question? I'm just going to add I know I said Dan, come in. So, Dan, I just have a question for you. One of the sections has to do with economic development. And, um, at least over the past couple of weeks, there's been more uh, publication of information at the state level about municipalities adopting a tax incentive program for businesses. Um, you know, so again, some sort of a, a, a deal, if you will, to incent certain types of businesses to come into town. Is that anything that you are aware of or you've looked into more, or is it something you think might benefit Hadley in any way? We wouldn't qualify for it. Okay. Okay. So almost like the um, the low income thresholds for like federal federal tax programs. Okay. All right. Because I didn't see that suggestion in that section, so I was wondering. Other questions? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. So, so I, I heard that it's the planning board's obligation to implement the plan by law. Right? So I understand that. I, I appreciate that you need to delegate some of this work because you have limited resources. Um, you know, here in the list, I didn't get all nine of them. Uh, land use, housing, open space, circulation. Those don't really fit into town departments as perfectly, right? So so I, I guess my question to you is, you know, have, have we looked at a plan or having a town planner? Uh, have we looked at 
consultants? Have we looked at PVPC helping us out in some capacity? Are there other outlets? Because I, I don't know that these departments can really help you all that much. Um, the PVPC is willing to help us as a consultant, yes. And that would probably be much more desirable to the town than hiring a town planner. Um, basically, to, to, to implement the plan, we don't want to have one person just designed, assigned to this because... Well, but, but it's, your, it's your responsibility to, to implement it, so they correct. report to you. Yeah, yeah, I understand, but I think PVPC, using them as the, as the, we already use them as a consultant, we give them, we pay them, I think it's the, is it $9,500 a year, and that's $7,500 a year for doing various work. The master plan was an additional fund, obviously. Um, but they have given us a lot of good advice and input for different things over the years, and because certainly if we had the money to expand that to use them in a larger capacity. Yes. Yes, sir. So just to follow up what David was saying, um, I think it is really upon the planning board to decide what needs to get worked on to decide what the planning commission needs to do. So what direction does the planning board want to go in? What's a priority to you guys? Um, because somebody's got to decide that. You know, it's not going to be the departments. So to some extent, we've done that. <clears throat> that is the entire implementation schedule, which does have uh, strategies, uh, priority, the target year for achieving that priority. So part of the planning process was to develop the implementation schedule, which will probably go out the window you know, immediately because something else is going to get a higher priority, something else is going to get promoted. So, it's it's a little confusing that the master plan, we're in charge of preparing the master plan, but once we prepare it, and we don't have overarching jurisdiction to implement it. So we do need to depend on the select board taking time away from the budget to address the, and it's not a huge number of things, but to address the things that the, um, select board has primary responsibility for. Um, it, so again, look through it. Now, to some extent, not every board is reflected in here. And I don't think the building committee has specific charges in here, but you are a committee appointed by the select board, so they can delegate some parts of their task perhaps to you. Uh, but all of the tasks are in here tagged with a responsible department. And most, of, many of those, especially in the land use section, uh, do come down to the, uh, the planning board. But you get out into the, get further into it, and other departments are indicated. So I think it is incumbent on and everybody to just take a look through and see if you're tagged with responsibility for anything. If you don't want the responsibility for it, uh, don't let it just die. Let us know if we can see about assigning to someone else. As I said earlier, except for the planning board, the selectmen, most other boards that are mentioned in here are really limited to one section. Capital planning is mentioned as a secondary responsibility group under the uh, public facilities and services, and your that group is listed at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven items under page eleven point seven. Okay, so these are all rated as high or medium. So, and some of these you're already working on, but it's mentioned in here to kind of keep it invisible and basically, if you want to, for lack of a better term, give the group credit for doing some of the stuff and put it in there as part of the master plan. So. We had a long range planning committee which no longer is in place. Um, why wouldn't we re implement that and have a long range planning committee to help us to implement um, the new goals that we want to set for long range planning? 
they, whatever they did years ago certainly has come to fruition with open space property, the solar um, fields, and uh, many other things that have uh, actually come about. Why can't, why can't there be another implementation of that committee? We could try. The last committee we had, the only members who were supposed to be, I think, up to, I forgot exactly the numbers, but when the committee finally disbanded or stopped meeting, they stopped meeting because the only members that were on the board were those that were members of other boards of towns. The volunteers basically no longer wanted to participate. Um, they would need some guidance, obviously, and you know, if, if it was decided if we could find the people interested in doing this, that would probably be good. But finding the people interested to put the time into this, because this last group really spent the time on zoning bylaws. And this group, if it is appointed, would have very little to do with zoning bylaws and really should look at the overall master plan and could they truly do some of the stuff required. I don't know. to follow the master plan by different areas. Um, we could certainly try, and if you want to, if you would, if the selectman wanted to advertise for that, I'm guessing on TV5, then I can't speak for the planning board because I'm only one person, but we could certainly investigate and see what we get for names and kind of get a mini resume of what, what their interests are to try to hit the different areas. Do you want to talk about it at your next planning board meeting? Sure. Yeah, we could do that. Okay. We'll get back to you. Sure. Okay. Yes? Um, looking at the time between the two plans, the 2000, I don't know, the old one and the new one, could you give us one or two examples of successes and one or two examples where we came up a little short? I have. The original master plan. Oh, I don't even do that. I know it's the original master plan. The, the Long Range Planning Committee came up with a guideline book defining the village overlay district. The one of the things that we ran into as a planning board was especially John Devine, God bless him, he's no longer here. But colonial, colonial, colonial. You probably heard that over and over at planning board meetings. Well, to be honest with you. What does colonial mean? Colonial to you may be different than colonial to me. And we ran into that time and time again. The guideline for the village overlay district that the, was created gave definitions and examples of what we <coughs> perceive colonial to be. And that's worked out pretty well now. Now when somebody gets a question on whether they want to build in a, or modify in the village overlay district, when we tell them colonial, they can go someplace and see what it means. Um, I believe that's one, that's one success. Um, a failure would be uh, cluster housing. The group tried 
twice anyways to get cluster housing passed at town meeting. Both, they all failed. And they never even got majority votes, so that was a failure. However, the town has spoken. They don't want cluster housing. That's fine. That's why it's not even mentioned in the new master plan, because after trying a couple of times and not getting there, the town has been pretty clear. We don't want cluster housing. We want to keep the residential the way we are. Um, uh, accessory apartments. Accessory apartments, the um, long range plan put together an accessory apartment bylaw for, I mean, it's called a mother law apartment, but obviously you can't call it mother law apartment. But if you have an attached um, building to a residence and not over 900 square feet, accessory apartments, or basically the intention is for, the, for somebody's parent or somebody else to live there. And that was passed by town meeting. We've got a number of accessory apartments in town where truly the in-laws went one way or another are living with the children. In other cases, people are using that as to supplement their income. Okay. What was, was, was home offices part of the long range plan or was that, I mean it was part of the long range plan, I'm not sure if the, if the uh, I mean, home offices were also implemented, but I'm not sure if that was Long Range Planning Committee who did that or the Planning Board did that. That one I'm not quite sure. But those were two successes and one failure. We modified it. Pardon? We modified it. We split it into the occupancy and the home occupation and the home office. We made that a special. That's what you guys did. Okay. Okay, you both worked on that. Right, okay. The, the Planning Board. The, I believe the long way planners wanted to have home occupation as one definition, and the planning board broke that into a definition, in a, into a definition of a home office where you have no uh, clients come to visit you, but you're just a home office. And then there's the home occupation where you actually have clients or visitors come to see you, like music lessons or you know, something like that, okay. Yes, ma'am. Can you describe how the master plan takes into account some of the newer initiatives like the library or the senior center, some major building efforts? How are those incorporated into this master plan? They really are. Mm -hmm. Except to mention that, you know, we need, you know, library support and senior center, a meeting place for the seniors in some way, shape, or form. But those were not specifically targeted, I believe, in any of the master plans, except to say we need a, a place where seniors can meet and we need a library where people can go to get um, periodicals or whatever else it might be. But we, we weren't into the, 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 the master plan, neither one really went after the specifics. We needed a new one. That was something that was decided by the groups that were responsible, the library group, and then the senior senator. Does that make it the public facilities? Right. Did it come under the heading of public facilities? Let it's, me look and see before I shoot my mouth again. Services. So in, in both the uh, case of the senior center and the library, <laughs> those issues sprung into life because they're driven, well, the case of the library is driven by the availability of a grant cycle which wasn't anticipated in the master plan. Uh, the master plan is generally quiet on issues of money. There are some good ideas, but not a lot of uh, background on how they're going to be financed. So something like the library came to fruition, went through the process, while we were updating the master plan, but it really isn't reflected in the master plan because it came from, came from different sources. So, when we talk about a master plan, it does have a facilities chapter, but it doesn't go into that level of detail. Um, and it didn't anticipate that there would be grant money available for the library. It didn't anticipate that that would in turn motivate uh, the senior uh, seniors to look for a new senior center. So it's flat out silent on a couple of those issues. It is a it's a lumbering document. It, it is not 
it just can't anticipate everything, and that, those are things that it didn't anticipate. Likewise, the uh, um, the North Hadley Fire Substation isn't really reflected in here uh, as a goal or objective. Uh, it's sort of the nature of it. I do want to say just one thing about the implementation committee. Uh, we are just a little leery about it because the implementation committee, uh, as Jim said, focused almost exclusively, if not exclusively, on zoning issues to the extent, it, it, basically there were unclear lines of authority and uh, it uh, basically was working on some of the same stuff that we were working on and not taking a holistic view of all of the issues. And that is something I think, having been through that exercise once, we have a better idea of how to do it another time. And um, again, there was also some confusion. The that last master plan was the first one we had done, and there was some confusion about the lines of authority and who had statutory responsibility. And that's one reason why we dissolved the Long Range Plan Implementation Committee that was approved by town meeting, because the master plan, management of the master plan, is committed to the planning board. It was not, it should not have been created by town meeting. So, uh, there are things, yes, we, we should be looking at better ways to do some of these things, but we also have to keep it within our charge. The original master plan very vaguely mentions uh, under the community aspect, enhanced community. And under that section, there's a very vague wording about it's the town center, enhancing the town center, which includes the library, the senior center, and stuff like that. But there's no specific mention as far as what is required to update or upgrade either one of them. I guess I assume that as board members and leads and listed as primary on some of these initiatives, that you should think about whether there are ways to incorporate those new initiatives that may not be mentioned directly in here, but might be very relevant to some of our priority areas we've been getting. I mean, I'm looking at, like, for the school to expand adult education opportunities, and to me, that seems like a natural partner. You would think about how the library or the senior center may play into that priority, even though they aren't being and you're absolutely right. The, the, the master plan is not trying to direct anybody or any group to do it this way. It's a, like Bill said, it's a very broad brush. This, this could be accomplished or should be accomplished in some way, shape, or form. What does that mean? We're not sure. That's for the kind of, we, we, that, that is for the group to figure out because like you said, if the planning board is going to tell the schools how to enhance senior, senior edu I mean, adult education, you're going to have a mess in plain English. But if the schools do it because that's what they know what to do, they're going to come up with a much better plan than exactly what you may say. Yes, ma'am. Um, so I'm, I'm the senior center director, and so I'm going to tag on to what you said insofar as when I went through um, the master plan, I was pulling out of everywhere <coughs> different things that had been mentioned as priorities that were pieces of what we were doing. And I think there's room for more pieces, as you're suggesting, to be pulled with these new initiatives. You know, um, just off the top of my head, you know, planning for um, alternative energy, things like that, the design of the new building. Um, for the seniors is uh, such that um, in the future photovoltaic panels can be put on there, so that addresses one thing. Um, we're also looking at uh, ways to bring kind of that campus feel in the community center. Um, one of the things that struck me too was um, the aging population and health. Um, deal directly with that. There's initiatives that I'm talking with, both with police, fire, schools, on how we can do that as a community um, and get each other involved in that. So I think that there are really ways that we can meet a lot of these goals just by, like you were saying, 
being aware of what it is you can do and looking at these goals and trying to tie some of what we know should be happening to some of those things and work and reaching out and saying, are you interested in partnering for this, that, or the other thing? And, and doing those kinds of things. I think there's absolutely room to meet some of those goals. That's great. Thank you. There's also a lot of things that are in the master plan that are already being worked on by the various groups, whether they know it or not. <laughs> okay. Seriously, I'm not trying to be a wise guy here, but um, discuss creating or the old, create an open space prioritization plan that's updated regularly on changing condition and opportunities for the Conservation Commission. They're constantly doing all kinds of things with a CPA and a conservation. They're always looking at that's just what I'm going to quickly pull out. This is not something that is, oh wow, we're going to do this. A lot of this, a lot of the items mentioned under the implementation are in some way, shape, or form already on somebody's list that they're looking at, or they're working at, or they're thinking about. So it's not like this is an, a hot plan. This is something that's really taking a lot of items that are on the different committees and boards and maybe a little bit more um, succinct putting them in one location. But I would be surprised if some of these a lot of the items in here are, in way, like I just said, being worked on in some way. Other questions? Yes, yes, ma'am. Go ahead. I just had a, a question about changes in the population: children, adults, seniors. The changes in population in the town seem to be going much quicker than in ten-year cycles. Now, uh, the other thing was about the 10% of affordable housing. Uh, affordable seems to be changing much quicker than in 10 years as well. So I was wondering if those changes in the demographics of the town were worked into that plan. Let me try to address the affordable housing. You're, you may be correct on the affordable housing, however, the state comes out with an affordable housing guideline at most every couple of years, I believe. It's not like they constantly are updating what is affordable. They go by census, state census, they, the, the uh, federal tax form that people file. And I'm not sure how often they take the, the data and get what is affordable. We, fall, we don't fall into an affordable group of Hampshire County or Hadley. We fall into the affordable housing of basically a large portion of Western Mass. And that includes Hadley, Amherst, Northampton, South Hadley, Springfield, Holyoke, West Springfield, and some of those other areas further south of us. I'm not sure how far north it goes. So the data is not something that's local, it's much more uh, a larger area that it encompasses. And so what may be affordable for just Hadley isn't affordable as the group goes. And that's a, that's the, that's a, a flaw, if you would, in a system. And affordable, I forgot what the exact, I know, I'm gonna go by what uh, Mr. Barry Roberts have been using for the senior center. The monthly, mortgage for a senior, and they don't go by age, they just go by the demographics of the area. I believe their mortgage cannot exceed, what did Barry say, 151 a month or something? Uh, I know it was, a, it was a percentage of their income. But right. I, I believe it was a percentage of the income, but it's a percentage of uh, the average, not their individual income. And it was a surprisingly low figure and much lower than we thought it would be. And it's presented some difficulties trying to meet that with his senior housing for this area because things are much more expensive in Hadley than they are in basically Springfield. Um, Anyways, no said about that. As far as uh, the seniors and stuff, and the population changing, again, you know, 
for Hadley, it may be changing in one way. We've got to go by what we get from state guidelines and everything else, and I'm not going to even try to explain that because that's beyond any kind of expertise that we have. The date is on the plan. Mm -hmm. The date is spelled out in the plan. The yeah. yeah. The, uh, the, oh. demo the demographics are addressed in part five, which is the housing chapter. They could just as well have gone in maybe three other chapters, but they are living in the housing chapter. So if you have questions, you could look at that section. Okay. Yeah. What exactly did you mean by, what, what did we, I mean, things are changing as far as population, income, and everything else goes, but what, what can we, what can a town do about that? And I guess is the question, I mean, it's a fact, as opposed to trying to address something. I mean, the, the affordability in having, we were at 14 percent to 13 point something percent of affordable housing based on the state guidelines. and. Anything over 10% puts us in a good situation as far as we can't get uh, low income housing shoved down our throat. We have to have a friendly 40, so called 40B housing, and we can't be forced to accept it. Um, so I'm not quite sure what you were getting at by saying the population, everything else is changing. It is. No, I, I, I understand that. No, I was just wondering. We are, we are lumped in with areas in Western Massachusetts with, which are not at all like Hadley. And, and I was wondering how we can put that into the master plan. It's really not. It's just it's stated in here as a fact. However, when things are calculated, we are grouped with the rest of the area, like I said, and there's not much we can do about that. We really can't. Well, it's a two-edged sword. We can try to do what we can for Hadley, but as far as affordability goes, we could be going to bring somebody in. Um, if you would to be affordable tenant, it has to be advertised statewide. We cannot limit it to Hadley. Jim, doesn't 40B state the threshold is 10% anyway? Yes, yes. Yeah. So state, state is this, this 10 minimum. state is 10% minimum. Yes, and we're at, I think, just under 14%. So our long-term goal was to set it to what percent? Our long-term goal is to try to maintain the status quo and not drop by any significant amount. And the new regulations specify that. Right, the new the, 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 the master plan recommends that, and the planning board has instituted two different zoning bylaws to address that. We have an inclusionary zoning, so if somebody wants to put a subdivision in, they have to have meet a, meet, meet a certain uh, affordable housing out of the inclusionary zoning. If the senior housing goes in, they have to have a certain percentage of senior housing that's affordable. Just a, just a couple more statements. I, I think when the, the plan was being developed, the municipal building committee was working with uh, the other building interests within the town to create what we thought was a good idea of a campus and it sort of fell into place for a lot of reasons that we have a campus and I think that promotes walkability for the village and I think that's a good thing. I, I wish there was a recommendation of the plan but what we thought was a good idea and I think the, the individual buildings believe that as a campus it operates more comfortably. What do you mean campus of town buildings? Well, no, I simply mean like the Library senior the center. library senior center, the, the new town buildings we have, plus the, the town offices we currently have are clustered in, into a loose campus, right? Don't say clustered well, to these guys. Right, yeah. right. Well, yeah. well, yeah. The, well, the, uh, under, under, good, you actually got a good comment. And under the community section, we mention about having a central town center. We don't specifically mention what you're saying. We're simply saying that the library, senior center, town hall, etc., should be a important group of the, of the buildings. And we're not trying to we're not trying to design anything in the master plan. We're trying to give ideas and guidelines. And it's up to the like I said earlier, it's up to the individual groups how you accomplish that. 
And what you're just saying certainly fits in with that. Uh, my next comment was about the cluster housing. And, and uh, I don't want to belittle any, any votes that the town had over the last few years, but I think that trends towards you know complete streets, walkability, transit-oriented development. There's been there's been lots of strides in the walkable community, and, and so I guess my question is, what what kind of steps does the long-range plan uh, recommend we take in terms of building a community that we can, we can interact more functionally rather than walking down Route Nine on the sidewalk? Is, is there anything you could you could state in there that? Each group is different, that. isn't it? Each group comments is different, isn't it? Uh, yeah, there, there are quite a few uh, recommendations uh, in the land use section. Uh, uh, promoting mixed use village center development, uh, promoting development supporting the rail trail, promoting traditional neighborhood development, uh, uh, creating a walkable, attractive village center or downtown style development. Uh, Adopt green development performance standards. Yeah, there's there's a lot uh, on that. Okay. We're driving the TV crew, crew nuts. Okay, so put put the mic back, John. Put the mic back. Put the mic back. Put the mic back. If you wish to speak, go to a microphone. Oh, nice. All right, because you're you, we're hearing you, but the people at home on TV are not. Check so, one, two. There you go. Uh, that's really that's really what those microphones are for. It's not as much for you to hear each other as for the people at home to hear what's being said. Thanks. I need a little circulation signal there. For a little while. <laughs> Bill, I heard you mention uh, mixed use in, in downtown as well as walkability in the downtown center. Now, I recall that being one of the initiatives that came out of the initial master plan. It's a plan to have a mixed use town center, and unfortunately, haven't had a chance to. Uh, review that section. I wonder if you could expound on that a little bit. Uh, the suggestions for mixed use and walkability in the downtown center. Well, it's just that a suggestion. Uh, the catch, if you will, is that uh, there are a lot of private properties that uh, are in the downtown sector. We don't have uh, command and control of a critical mass. There are parts, but right now it's kind of hard to figure out how to stitch them together. It's certainly a good a good goal. I know that uh, since the original master plan came out, a number of those properties, right, you know, in the targeted area, had changed hands. I'm wondering if the town has any long range thoughts on forms of appropriations or acquiring additional lands as they may or may become available over time. I mean, we, like I said, there were a number that, that came through right in the sequence, and we weren't really prepared to move on them. But if we, if it, it's just a nice idea and a nice concept, when this next piece comes up, by the time we prepare to move on it, is there something that we you, you think we could do to maybe take, to be better prepared for the next opportunity? I, I'm sure there are things that can be done. I don't think there is an overall vision of what pieces people are looking at. So that's part of the whole issue of how to put the master plan together, how to implement it, when a lot of it comes down to money issues. And then are we going to spend the next $500,000 on buying an available piece of property on uh, Railroad Street, say, uh, that we may not be able to stitch together with other parcels for 10 or 15 years, versus spending the same amount of money to expand Central Fire Station. Uh, those are the kind of, you know, we, we set the priorities, but when it comes time to actually implement something, um, you know, if it, 
some of the, some of these we can implement fairly inexpensively because it involves the planning board bringing things to uh, town meeting. Other things require a much more global solution. And if nothing else, I'd like to see this be the start of a discussion about those goals. But we are, we are not at an implementation level for a walkable downtown right now. No, it certainly would take a fair amount of, like you say, capital up front. Um, there's also probably creative ways to incentivize this type of program so that maybe the town doesn't have to own it, but if there's tax incentives and the like to uh, make it conform to a use that we're looking at and have it be owned by private individuals, um, I don't know, just, uh, I'm sure there are, are creative ways to uh, approach this at a, at a legislative level to help make this, uh, this initiative happen. But you know, you raise a good point, and Bill makes a good point that the planning board items that have, where the planning board has really responsibility, are for the most part usually inexpensive to implement. And I think that's why the implementation committee, you know, the first master plan went after those because they didn't cost much, they didn't cost anything, just just some time. Unfortunately, most of the other, many of the other items for other boards are not inexpensive. Um, looking at various things, even a tax incentive, um, you know, right now, the town of Hadley is not in a financial situation to start giving tax breaks to everybody because we need the tax money for a lot of things. So it's a two-edged sword, it's a great idea, but the devil's in the details, as it said. Um, and if it costs much money, it's probably going to be a tough one. So I think a lot of those things, Jim, are what town planners do and what PBC might help you with. So I encourage you to continue to think about how they can help you there. But I, I simply had one comment about sort of monitoring. And I guess maybe in, in 2005, we all had the greatest intentions. Ten years later, we implemented some things. A couple more years have gone by. We have a final plan. But I think... I would recommend maybe that you think about how you could monitor sort of a report card, if you will, and maybe it goes into the annual report or something that kind of gives us a grade that says, you know, we've actually implemented some of these things so that in 10 years from now, we can actually say that we've, we've kept track of what's accomplished. That, putting something like that in the annual report would probably be a pretty good idea. Yeah, I agree with that one. I just have one question. When you're talking about um, the development of traditional neighborhoods, I mean, I look around Hadley, and the traditional neighborhoods that are being built are a wide street, you know, not necessarily sidewalks, and houses set back. And that doesn't really create the area of, you know, walkability or neighbors and things like that. So what are we looking at or what are you looking at as far as that are in the either zoning or subdivision regs which would encourage, encourage neighborhoods from being developed versus traditional subdivisions from being developed? Which is completely our open space. Right. From input that we got from the, from the majority of townsfolk, they don't want to change the setbacks, they don't want to change the distance between houses. The street widths on the new subdivisions have essentially been modified to be a little bit narrower to reduce some of the blacktop, but the majority of people in town do not want to go the way you're saying. Okay. Because, I mean, if we're looking at encouraging, you know, walkability or neighborhoods, things like that, especially if the right of way hasn't shrunk, and now you've got less pavement, so that's meaning houses are set even further back. And if we want to establish some type of community, you know, have people actually know their neighbors, that's, I mean, part of the things that David mentioned was talking about, you know, walkability. Neighborhoods need to be able to be walked so that you know your neighbors, you walk by them and that. So, I mean, I realize that people are looking at that, um, and maybe that's the feedback you got, but if we're looking at building a community, we may need to look at maybe bucking some of those trends 
and encouraging neighborhoods to be built in there. Just a little more discussion about the walkability. Um, we have the opportunity now in the center of Hadley, and along with the campus plan, but also we have properties that are commercial right now, but what we don't have is mixed use and zoning. So that is the next step. We can have shops on the lower floors, apartments above. It's all walkable for these people that are living in this area. They're right on Route 9. They can take the bus. They got the bike path. This is the kind of thing that we're talking about or I think the master plan is talking about. And there's certainly plenty of areas in the center that this can be done. It's just somebody has to decide what areas this is going to be and that we're going to go forward with this. And this existed 10 years ago in the master plan. It just never went in there. So. Part of the mixed use is already permitted. You just can't have an apartment, but you can have a business on the first floor and you can have a residence on the upper floor or in the same, you, you could have one residence per lot and you could have businesses on the same lot. Yeah, and I'm trying to imagine that, even down Route 9. I mean, it, that doesn't fit with your typical mixed use type of building. I'm not saying have 30 apartments, but I think one's a little stingy. Um, if you think about, that's a large apartment over a very small shop, or it's a very, you know. you, And you're correct, and being in a college area, we're probably going to have, if we were to permit that, we might be inundated with students living all over the place and the, re the resulting issues that encompass that follow. We already have that. And as an alternative viewpoint, we might be inundated with people who want to age out of their four bedroom homes and stay in town and buy a condo. So I think that the uh, there's a whole other population, let alone I'm looking over here at Mr. Gabriel Owen, um, relatively recent graduate from college who would love to stay in the area and can't afford a farmhouse with 40 acres. So I do think it's a discussion I'm hoping that we continue to have. So I think that, if, if nothing else, puts highlights uh, one of the clashes in the bylaw. Uh, how do you create traditional neighborhoods? Well, first you have to define what's traditional. Uh, is West Street a traditional neighborhood, or is North Hadley Center the traditional neighborhood? Um, and then you, it, 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 by introducing mixed-use, three-story brick buildings into, do we want to introduce that? Um, th these are goals that are discussed in the master plan, doing and, and on some level, they seem inconsistent, and I'm not sure. Part of it is we also are not getting proposals in. Um, we are driven in part by what comes in the door, by what people want to build. And what you suggest of a mixed use, say retail in two apartments above, um, <coughs> Maybe people are discouraged because the bylaw says only one lot, one dwelling per lot, but that would not be consistent with a lot of, it's something, yes, and we'd probably like it, but it's not consistent with a lot of the rest of the town. So that's one of the real tensions in this section of the, uh, of the master plan because I'm not sure you can have both. is um, Barry Roberts with the East Street Housing for Seniors. He's building houses close to the street and near each other. What kind of change did he get that other people can't? That permitted by the senior housing bylaw. Yep. Essentially, what Barry Roberts is doing, uh, that's a condominium community. So that is not a street per se. That is a driveway. And uh, senior housing is the one exception to the no more than one dwelling per lot. But it's basically one big lot, one single lot, a single row, and individual condos around it. Thank you. The, the caveat to that is it can only be for 55 and over, so there will be no children living there. 
and the impact on services will be much less than if it was families. I think part of the mixed use that we're talking about in the reference to multiple apartments, one example, if you look at it, look at the center of South Deerfield. There are businesses and then there are apartments on the second floor. They are close enough to a lot of the colleges where they can do that. And if you're talking about like a village center, like in the downtown, what we call our downtown area, right here, you could very easily have businesses with one or two, maybe even three apartments up top. And that's not necessarily going to drive the college kids in. Because as, as Keegan said that, you've got a lot of people who, you've got students who are leaving, graduating high school, go off to college, and they want to come back. They're automatically priced out of anything here. And there aren't any apartments, really, per se, for people to come back. So if we keep, if our population keeps graying, and we don't bring in the new and the younger blood into the community who want to stay in the community, and not just transient, we're cutting off our nose to spite our face. And I like, you know, I, I agree with the idea of mixed use, and mixed use being, you know, um, businesses or storefronts with apartments up top. And as I said, perfect example, driving the center of South Deerfield. That's exactly what they have down there. But they've had theirs forever. That that's nothing new for them. What right. would be new for us and new for our people to understand that. And I'm not saying it's wrong. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that it's something new that people would have to process. But that's where the leaders of the community <coughs> have to take that chance and put that out there for people well, to as, see. As we did with the cluster housing and it failed. But we're more than happy to put out anything there that you think would be what. But I mean, if you look at the areas that would be appropriate for that would be this central business, in a sense, the central business area. That's have, appropriate where you've got bus service, you've got transportation, everything else. Well, you have to get the historical commission online because mm -hmm. now they're saying this is the overlay district. So they also mm -hmm. have to have their input. They don't. Well, I think they have their input anyways on what the building looks like. Do they have the input? I don't believe they have input on the use of the building. That's zoning. So they would have what the building looked like. They seem to get involved with a lot of different issues, so I'm not sure where that is. No, wait, wait a minute, I am on that committee. Right, but there, but, 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 there, no, but there is certain areas that they chime in on that I'm not aware of that sometimes they can add to uh, whatever is, is what I'm saying, that sometimes they have their input into what would happen. You know what I mean? I mean, I think because it's an overlay district, I think we would have to have some input from them. It, it certain, uh, certainly has input in what it looks like. It has very limited, if no input, on what those buildings are used. Okay. Okay, um, we need to wrap this up. However, do we have any new topics that haven't been dis been brought up already before we wrap up? It's been a very good discussion, a lot of information passed. Um, we appreciate it, taking stuff into a, into a consideration, and the other boards, obviously the board need to look at their respective responsibilities or so-called assignments within the master plan. Anything different that we haven't already brought up? I'd like to thank the planning board for all their hard work on this. I know it's been multiple uh, times, and um, the input that we had, got tonight, it's too bad it wasn't available a little earlier in the process as well. And we should point that out, that it would have been a little more helpful if that had been while we were going through the process and you were going through the process. That could have been possibly implemented in earlier. Yeah, it would help. But I, I mean, that's the whole point of having the meeting tonight, I think, is to gather input. And like I said, this is an evergreen document. This is not the law. It can be changed. Um, you see a topic in there, if it's appropriate to work on or change or whatever. Um, we can do it, but thank, thank you for the input also. Thank you very much, you've been a good crowd. I think Molly has the next topic. Thanks again, guys. Uh, so the good news is a lot of people thought that we weren't gonna have anything to talk about, so clearly, had they showed up tonight.
I'm just wondering, I, I saw another article, it had something to do with discussion on the sale of the North Carolina Village Hall. What a wonderful segue. <laughs> so, <laughs> we just have a couple of more items on, on tonight's agenda and um, want to be respectful of people's time and hopefully we can get out of here at about 8.30, so make it an hour and a half meeting. Um, so the next thing that we wanted to talk about is um, the North Hadley Hall sale, as folks know. Um, we went out to bid on that. Uh, we had a couple of respondents and that was quite a while ago and then without rehashing everything and then there was the idea to take the lot next door and build a fire substation, and I'm not, again, I'm not going to go through all of that, but at any rate, um, we've been reminded by the Municipal Building Committee that the issue with North Hadley Hall kind of remains unresolved, and I think, uh, Jerry, did you want to um, talk to it, because you spoke to it at the select board meeting, so do you want to talk to it and get people's input? Well, the Municipal Building Committee said, you know, it was one of the things on their agenda, and I think that can almost be credited with the original master plan as well. I know it was a discussion with it, but many of the, the people from the Municipal Building Committee is here this evening, and one of the things that they wanted to do was to go forward uh, regarding getting uh, the hall sold. Uh, but we didn't want to make the same mistakes we made the first time, uh, because we made a lot of mistakes along the first time. So while we were all sitting in the same room, Timmy's here, Planning boards here, historical commissions here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the fact about selling that business or selling North Hadley Hall, what we need to do, what it's capable of being, so that the next time we go out there for, with a request for a proposal, we understand and it comes back the right way. I don't think we all sat in the same room the first time, and, and we, were, we have a lot of egg in our face with the way that went, you know, what it could be used for, what could be sold, what couldn't be sold, and, and I know the planning board has a very specific uh, rules and regulations as to where what what it can be used for and I know historical commission had some uh, insight as to what they'd like it to look like over there as well once it had been sold so if, if you can enlighten us as to what it can be and what we can bid it for it can be used for a lot of stuff with zoning variants they did go for a zoning variants and I believe they did not receive it for a bunch of reasons um, because it's really a single residence property. Um, however, going back to Mr. Mary Roberts, a little bit of the mess we ran into with senior housing bylaw, and this is not blaming anybody, this is just a fact. The senior housing bylaw, um, zoning bylaw, allows for senior housing, and it stipulates such a so much percent must be affordable. Mr. Mary Roberts is building a senior housing complex on East Street. The buildings are condos and they are being sold and not rented. The uh, senior housing bylaw stipulate that the Hadley Housing Authority would be responsible for implementation of the affordable section of a senior of any senior housing bylaw because that's how they implement. That's how they utilize. Um, Golden Court and the uh, family houses that are on east of Golden Court. And Mr. Roberts went to the Housing Authority and asked them in a letter how they wanted to proceed with being responsible for finding tenants. They went to the State Housing Authority and the State Housing Authority said, don't touch them, don't do that. It is not your responsibility. The state affordable housing board recommends housing authorities are to do it. So you have two different state authorities acting like this. We never knew that when the housing bylaw was put in because it seemed and nobody had ever said anything before that Mr. Roberts is the test case. We ran into a massive mess over there. Only reason I mention that is because Mr. Roberts has about $350,000 that he has reserved for some kind of affordable housing in town. And one of the possibilities that was mentioned to him was to buy the North Hadley Hall and convert it into senior housing. He's willing to look at that. That would give us, the, that would give him the affordable housing he needs for the seniors and would be 
at least in the planning board's view and probably some others, a home run because if you're going to put apartments in North Hadley Hall and for seniors, that would be great. I don't know how much effort he has put into looking into that um, because during that time frame, it's been in limbo what we're going to do. Only reason I mention that is that's one possibility for North Abbey Hall. The other possibility is what was what was brought up before about um, individual apartments for general use. So it could be, as far as housing goes, there's two possibilities. The senior housing is a simple special permit by the planning board. Something else would be um, a zoning variance by the CBA. Both of those are possible, but to permit by right, it's really a single family residence property. I believe the property might be big, might be big enough to put two houses there, but I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure what front did you have. It's built before 61, so we could have an apartment downstairs and an apartment upstairs. Okay, if you built before 61, you could get a special permit from the uh, ZBA to have two um, apartments on the property. But um, for what it's going to cost to renovate that property and stuff like that, um, we're talking some. If you talk about expensive housing, that would be expensive housing for two people, for two uh, apartments. And the multiple families where the possibilities come in because then that cost obviously spread over a number of things, a number of units. I'm not sure I answered the question, but. here today. Do you have any input on the sale of that building? We haven't heard nothing. That's why I was asking. Well, well this has been ongoing. Please don't tell me you haven't heard anything. We've been talking about it for years. Um, but, I mean, you had some input on it already. Um, what was your input and so that we understand it when we go through the bid process as to what we need to take into account um, from the perspective of the historical commission? Or you're talking North Hadley Hall is within the North Hadley Historic District. That means that building and a few others in town have uh, restrictions on the changes. In other words, you have to keep the outside of it looking essentially like it does now because that lends its character to the village of North Hadley. That's the only restriction we have on the building. That has been there ever since it was uh, put up for sale by the town. That has not changed. Excellent. That's, that's what I wanted to make sure. Uh, Mr. Tudor. Thank you, Jerry. J just a couple of comments. I think. One second. Andy, did he get his thousand points? He did. That's why I was going to get up and announce that. Thank you for the update. I appreciate it. Sorry. No, that's great. Um, so, Jerry, I think the buildings committee thought this was going to be the easy one, right? We started with this one, and, and the cost of renovating it, we all know, is, is way more than this, that this town can afford for that program, for that building. So, unfortunately. But, but we did work with the historic uh, commission to develop historic preservation restrictions. Uh, those were all agreed to. And, and I think what's happening is we're, we're kind of stuck in no man's land here with Mr. Roberts, and, and this has gone on for quite some time. I think the RFP went out maybe two years ago. I don't know if there's a sunset clause on that. Unfortunately, when that was written, uh, collaboration with the select board, we kind of uh, went through a process where we set um, certain um, points that could be established if you were to offer uh, a, a home for the, uh, the fire truck for a number of months, if you were to offer a, an easement to, to the pond uh, for the town use. There were a whole bunch of things, and, and I think those who offered those things were to get more points, and there was going to be some scale. Unfortunately, we got two. We only got two bids, right? So, but but I mean, we're, we're to, to your point though. There is a sunset on it, and that's why yeah. we need to go out again. 
we do not yeah. need to go back to town meeting for town meeting approval. Okay. But, but the, uh, the time frame in between the original, as you had said, it's over two years ago, is, is needs to be redid. And it's just the, the proper rules of purchasing, and we're just going through that. That's the only reason that we are attempting to go through this. I mean, not to, to hinder anyone else from bidding on the project at all. There's not been new bidders that are introduced which are making the process now uh, uh, being done because there's no bidders. It's a fact that there has been a sunset clause. And we talked about it the last few meetings. David went to, uh, and got the, the state review on it. He came back and told us that, that we don't need to go to town meeting, but we, need to, we, do, we do need to be bid. Okay, I appreciate that. And, and just for everyone's uh, purpose here, I, I think the, the select or the municipal buildings committee's position still stands that we recommend the sale of the building with the historic preservation restrictions employed. Your recommendations is why we're here tonight talking about it. I, I have a question about the town meeting vote itself. Um, we voted on one parcel that made up the North Hadley Hall. And I don't know if I got this right, so you tell me that the site really has two parcels uh, in between the church and the hall is a separate assessor's parcel than the part that the building is on. And we only had a vote to sell one parcel. So do we need a second town meeting vote to sell the second parcel? Can I have an answer for you in a second, Mr. Friedman? So the first thing I need to do is disclose that I have a conflict of interest on the sale of North Hadley Village Hall because a social club which I belong to is an interested buyer. So I'm going to restrict my comments to merely factual information and Jennifer James is going to take over the administration of the uh, RFP. So the original for the, so there is one lot which contains the uh, playground, the access to the lake and the building. Um, the town, original town meeting vote was for the sale of that building and the parcel uh, with uh, restrictions, of the historic preservation restriction attached to the building. So we have all the town meeting votes in place that we need in order to pr uh, proceed with the, the, the RFP. Part of the bid process. I, I just feel like we have to get the plan, you know, there's an order, so I would like to see what the plan is where, you know, it's not going to cost us more money to do this. I, I think the sale of the property would be fine. I'm not against the sale. It's just, are we pushing us into another problem? Are we going to have to now rush to get the substation? Are we going to have to rush this? What's, I just want to see the plan in order. And the other thing with the, I, I still um, not quite clear. Um, when we did talk about um, the uh, senior housing and going into that, that sounded fine too. But I'm really too not too sure why they didn't do the um, affordable housing right there. Um, I know that the um, authority, the town didn't want it to be a part of it, but Valley CDC said yes, they did want to be a part of it. Mayor Roberts contacted Valley CDC. Valley CDC was surprised that they didn't, that you know what's happening you know that that it's that they're not just so I, I mean there was other concerns i know that um but as far as the sale the biggest thing is the cost is it going to cost us more money to deal with the fire trucks that was my biggest concern okay, thank you mr Niner. there's a couple of things that uh, i think need to be looked at and defined before we go out to bid again. There's a lot of question that needs to be answered with regard to the legality of the sale of the property with respect to the ball field. Uh, I don't recall. 
recall what town it is. There's some law uh, case in regards to that. That needs to be brought forward and, and, and brought up, up to the people to, so everybody knows what's going on with that. But that's if there was going to be a building put on it. I'm sorry? That's if there was going to be a building put on the And Joyce means our attorneys will review that as well. Yeah, that's right. Probably. We already have it here. I think we also, like we were uh, at the very beginning, we had a lot of meetings up there with regards to what the building is going to be used for. The reality is you have a very large building that makes it very complex of what it could be used for. And reality is that anybody that comes in there has to make some type of profit. We did get one good bid. We sat on it for quite some time and still very interested in going forward with that building. But the problem is you have to look at the dollar figures. Be realistic about this. The issue with putting the six regular apartments in is you're not looking at accessibility issues. Others, you're going to have accessibility issues, which brings the cost up significantly. That's why there wasn't many bids on it. That's what you have to look at. That's a reality. If you do the 55 and older, that entire building has to be accessible. You're putting a price tag of over $300,000 just for that. That puts it into a, a dollar figure that there's no profit to. I think there's been some talk in regards to uh, town monies, if there's a possibility that that can be utilized within that building for anybody coming in, being CPA money. Those things have to be looked at. People are shaking their heads. Who's talking about it, Tim? Several people have. Who's talking about it, Tim? Wait, Glenn Moore. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. I'll talk to that. Okay. So, I mean, let's bring all this stuff out in the open, start talking about it and see what we can actually do and bring forward as a good possibility so people can bid on it properly. Appreciate your update. So, uh, yeah. so the uh, planning board has been kicking around some ideas, uh, and there are a lot of moving parts here, so bear with me. The uh, <clears throat> starting point is that we are going to be getting some money in from uh, both Mr. Roberts on his senior housing. This is payment in lieu of a cash payment to the town towards affordable housing instead of dedicating individual condos within his development to affordable housing. Uh, likewise, we have a developer uh, for a subdivision in North Hadley that will trigger the inclusionary zoning, which requires him to contribute money towards affordable housing, provide an affordable unit in the development, or provide an affordable unit elsewhere in town. Um, when we adopted the inclusionary zoning a few years ago, we also had a proposal for an affordable housing trust fund that would be a bucket, a recipient, to hold this money. At the time, that article was withdrawn from town, on town meeting floor because of some questions about it. But we have money coming in now. We didn't have any money on the horizon then. We have money coming in. We need a place to put it. If we created a municipal affordable housing trust fund, that trust fund could also tap into the Community Preservation Act's affordable housing component. And it would have a certain sum of money. We haven't figured out exactly what. Were we talking about 400000 in the CPA? Uh, between the CPA and the money we're getting in from developers, we'll have multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars that an affordable housing trust fund could use towards affordable housing in Hadley. One way that it could 
work is for the Affordable Housing Trust Fund to indicate that it would dedicate some of this money, which is off the, t it's not from taxes, it is off the tax books, dedicate some of this money towards improvements to North Abbey Hall and perhaps uh, put North Abbey Hall out to lease to a developer with the understanding that the town would have a, would be able to, as landlord, de-lend the place, put in new windows, put in an elevator, or at least have money to cover some of this. Uh, that way the town could end up still owning what would be two, four, six, eight, you know, we haven't gone into that level of detail, uh, affordable senior units in the center of North Haddon. As I said, there are a lot of moving parts, including getting things approved by town meeting to even create the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. But that is one avenue where we can reach monies that are otherwise untapped, that have no impact on the tax rate, use them for a town dedicated purpose of creating affordable housing and preserving North Abbey Hall. So, uh, do we that's- Do have to maintain ownership of the building to do that? No. We don't have to. We could sell it. Lease but, or something like that? We could do something like that. But on the other hand, if we had this money invested in it, and there would be the, if we did sell it, there would be restrictions on it, both the historical restrictions and uh, senior affordability restrictions. Historical restrictions are already there, right? Yeah. That doesn't change. Well, I don't know if it's actually been put on yet. Um, it's been discussed, I know. Uh, but uh, they, yeah, there are a lot of variables. And those, that was going into even more moving parts that we haven't even begun to discuss. But we, what we were starting to work with was, is there a way we can funnel some of the money that will be there into development of the parcel. It works almost like TDR. Similar. Yeah, similar. similar. So a couple things that um, with the Conservation Commission looked at, we saw tonight we had a meeting and we saw four variations of what potentially could happen there. And I believe it was the public law um, constitution article 97 which talked about that ball field there was acquired as a ball for a playground. So I think that's what we were looking at. That would have to go through the town attorney. What do we, what do we need to dispense with that? But some of the plans we saw weren't very clear. And you have to, when you, if you go out to bid, you need to recognize that because the pond is there and there are associated wetlands adjacent to the pond, that 100 feet from uh, wherever the resource area is defined will have to come under jurisdiction with the Conservation Commission. So that's just something that, you know, we've talked about access down to the water. Those are things where we're going to need some additional permitting and you just don't want to go out to bid and say, look, these are all the things you can do when it, some of it may not be realistic or may have to be scaled up. Julie Norman, thank you. Excuse me. Okay, thank you. That was uh, helpful input on that issue. Um, and so, again, in the spirit of time, and just the last thing we wanted to talk about tonight, which finally this is the participative part of the program, uh, we want to run around quickly and make sure that primarily the folks at home who might be watching this, or who eventually will watch this, are aware of the opportunities to volunteer and participate in your local government. So, I mean, if you're at home and you Obviously, I wish you were here tonight. Um, and I know that I don't want to spend a lot of time complaining more. You guys are coming. So, um, at any rate, I just wanted to go around quickly. I mean, obviously, we have our normal election cycle coming up, so you know, people are aware of the, um, you know, there are vacancies on the select board, school committee, you know, kind of the, the typical um, publicized spots, but we also have various committees who are represented here tonight who I do believe have some vacancies. So I know, uh, well actually Terry, you're on the Shade Tree Committee. I believe you have two or three vacancies? Uh, I think that's what Marlo said. One or two, yeah. Okay, so there's a Shade Tree Committee? Yes. 
And we have? The Agricultural Commission actually has one member, one alternate. The Cemetery Committee has is searching for two new members. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry. Okay, um, the Agricultural Commission. Okay. Rock star. I'm not a rock star. Um, the Agricultural Commission um, is looking for one member and one alternate. The Cemetery Commission is looking for two new members. Conservation is looking for one new associate member. Cultural Council is looking for five members. The Disability Commission is looking for three members. Hadley Media is looking for one new member. The Historical Commission no longer needs new members. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> the Municipal Building Committee is looking for one new member. North Hadley Village Hall Fire Substation is looking for one new member. And the Shade Tree Committee is looking for one new member. Okay, great. So, and the Finance Committee? One member. One member. Sorry, I'll add oh. to the list. <laughs> So again, if anybody is interested, um, you can always get excellent information by calling uh, Town Hall. You can talk, call the Select Board's office and talk to Jennifer. You can talk to David Nixon. You can talk to people who are uh, incumbent on those committees right now to find out what it's all about. Um, one of the ideas that was floated, and I apologize we weren't able to pull it together this evening, was really to have some sort of a um, fair, if you will, kind of a a job or a volunteer fair where the various groups could come together and that would be a very informal type of session where um, anybody interested in being on uh, being a trustee being an elected official being a volunteer could find out you know what's the time commitment what's involved um, again no commitment on their part but just an informative session so i think that we're still going to try to make that happen some way somehow um, again sorry that we couldn't do it tonight so unless there's anything else, I think people want to go home. Yeah. So uh, again, huge shout out um, to the planning board. Thank you for all of the hard work. Thank you everybody here who participated tonight. And we'll see you soon.